welcome back. Now, we had this little interim with Dart and I playing a uh, Who Can Kill Themselves first few matches. We're going to be going Forsen versus Bunny Muffins in a few seconds. Um, both players are already, I think, the, they might have already started. Now, we have the lineup for uh, for both players as far as classes go. Forsen brought Hunter, Mage, and Warlock, and Bunny Muffins brought Warrior, Paladin, Hunter. So they both share the Hunter, which, I mean, I guess isn't much of a surprise. What do you think now about these two lineups? So taking a look, it seems that Bunny Muffins actually banned uh, Forsen's Mage. Meanwhile, Forsen banned Bunny Muffins Paladin. So we are going to see Forsen's Hunter and Warlock versus Bunny Muffins Warrior and Hunter. Now, for those who are just tuning in, this uh, tournament actually has a format of a best of three con conquest style, where each player brings three decks and one is actually banned out. Yeah, so, so you can target stuff basically. Absolutely. It's a whole new strategy. Um, we've seen some people bring some interesting lineups in the past. In particular, Toyota yesterday brought an anti-hunter lineup, which unfortunately was kind of uh, punished pretty badly when Strife Crow actually won with his hunter deck. So it's a debate as to whether you want to bring all-around solid decks or, again, try to think of a strategy that will give you the up kind of give you an upper hand against your opponent. Yeah, we saw earlier. I think Thoida would actually like he yesterday. He brought an anti, completely you know anti, as you said, um, hunter deck lineup. And then today we saw him play earlier, and he brought something that looked like more of an all around lineup with a hunter. Which, by the way, I asked him, and it wasn't that standard. He played a Zerdrakes and Arcane Shots, but it was. It looked to us like a very standard lineup, um, not really targeting anything specific. So that was kind of interesting. Usually you want to bring a very a, a similar lineup uh, in a Conquest format more so than anywhere else. But I don't know that everybody's going to pick that strategy by default. Exactly. So Forsten seems like to have brought pretty standard decks. Hunter and Warlock, we've seen a lot. Mage, um, again, I've seen in the past, Forsten likes to use a lot of aggro-type mages, either Mech Mage, Tempo Mage, even some sort of just Rushdown Mage. So that may be why Bunny Muffins wanted to actually ban it out of the way. What type of Warlock do you think actually Forsen decided to bring? Well, I think Forsen's more of a... I mean, based on what we saw there for a few seconds, it must have been Zoo, right? Or is that more of a mid-range mm -hmm. lock? It, it looks like we are getting world, into game one. So right away, we do see Forsen on a Zoo deck while Bunny Muffins is playing Patron Warrior. What do you think about this matchup overall? I think it really depends on whether or not the patron can get uh, a mid-game swing. Because it still suffers from the same old problems that Warrior used to back when it played Control. But it's much easier now to get a mid-game swing against them. Whereas usually you would stabilize sometime on turn 6 or 7. Now you can sometimes do it a bit earlier than this. But this is a really dangerous start from Forsen. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be very tough for Bunny Muffin to stop the bleeding. However, Forsen actually does not have what looks like a turn 4 play unless he wants to implode his own egg, which could be a consideration. And he top decks the inking boss, <laughs> filling out his curve perfectly. Esports, esports, that's exactly what it is, esports. But wait, 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 he only has 75% mana utilization that turn. We gotta be yeah. careful of that. And look at that, Bunny Muffin's blowback here, attacking to the Voidwalker. So this is a good move. The question is whether Forsen uh, wants to actually use the Doom Guard, losing both Implosion and Power Overwhelming. Now, Power Overwhelming is usually not a card you want to lose. However, we have seen that Bunny Muffins has used his first Abyss Rate. So I wouldn't have been surprised if Forsen actually opted to use the Doom Guard there to push the damage and hope that Bunny Muffins had no answer for it. Yeah, but Power Overwhelming is a bit better in the same uh, in this case because you're still getting almost as much damage out of the egg and you're also spawning an extra threat that the warrior has to answer, which in this case is going to be very difficult. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Frothing Berserker is nice, but it's not going to be enough. I mean, at this point, Forsen is going to be taking the game pretty much. So by tacking into the wolf here and using Execute on what will actually be the 4-4 four four after the wolf dies, it will leave, Bunny Mo or it will leave Forsen with a 2-3 and a 1-1. One one. More than enough However, to, uh, his opponent with the Doom Guard. Absolutely, and when the Doom Guard pops out, this will be game one. Forsen takes Bunny Muffin 1 0 with a quick start to the match. Uh, so, Forsen uh, just, I mean, that was a really quick game. Usually, Zoo is played fairly quickly, to be honest, but that was just, like, the decisions were really quick. And I think it kind of pilots itself. Until you start running into the funky patron plays, the deck kind of plays itself out. You know, when you get such a good curve with the egg and then you follow it up, you top deck your only four, four turn, like, you know, with that uh, M Gang boss, the only possible four drop you could have played there. I think that kind of played itself out. 
Absolutely. I actually personally think that a lot of people are underestimating the power of Zoo currently, just because they can contest a lot of the uh, patron decks now that some of them have slowed down. Some of them have been replacing loot hoarders for stuff like Gnomish Inventors. It allows the Zoo decks to speed up and gain that momentum enough to actually take out their opponent, usually by turn 5 or 6, as we saw in that game. Yeah, Forsen's gonna have to go for his Hunter deck now, so he's got possibly a very aggressive lineup, and, you know, Titular Celestial was saying that recently in an interview he did for Gosu Gamers, he says that Agro, like, statistically from the stats that they've gathered, um, seems to have a big edge, so he plays aggressive deck as a result of those stats being gathered, and, uh, to him, it makes just all the sense in the world to focus on Agro rather than even try for control. Mm -hmm. And as we saw in um, Dreamhack, Tiddler did do well, so he does know what he's talking about there. Who do you think has advantage in this matchup between Patron Warrior and Hunter? What looks like kind of a hybrid version? Yeah, I think this is hybrid. I would say uh, if a high main falls down and Bunny Muffins doesn't have what it takes to handle it, that's usually what is the nail in the coffin. The thing is, mm -hmm. Fiery War Axe was never drawn for Bunny Muffins in those two games that we've seen just now, which is always a, big of a, prob uh, a bit of a problem. Now, Bunny Muffins actually has the perfect answer to this Leoc, and he's, I'm sure he's ecstatic that it was Leoc over Huff or Amisha there. Because yeah. now he actually only has to take the two oh, damage. Oh, wow! But it's a snake trap! Forsen is running snake trap. L again, luckily, Bunny Muffins will only have to take uh, damage from the snakes throughout the course of one turn, as he will be able to wipe them off the board with the uh, Death Bite the following. Yeah, the AoE is going to be meaningful. That's an extra 3 damage that Forsen manages to weave in, however. which And every bit counts when you're playing against a class that can start armoring up to counter your hero power, which, against other classes, can be your best source of consistent damage output. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think about his choice to actually attack before putting down the Acolyte? I'm a bit surprised by it. Ooh, what a whiff. Mm. Forsen ne needs to find an Iron Beak Owl if he wants to do anything with that Ancient Water. I, I would love to see an Acolyte of Pain into the Cruel Taskmaster here, just to get build up a little bit of board presence and start cycling through your deck. Um, oh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And he's playing a Blood Mage Thalnos, by the way, which is not a uh, an unseen card in Warrior, but it's not very common. Very often you see it played... Um, like, I've seen it played in variants of Dream Patron with Revenge as a one-of, because the 4 damage AoE takes out a lot of the stuff that will typically take you down in a Zoo matchup, let's say. Um, mm -hmm. When you're low enough, you can get a Blood Mage Mage Revenge for 4 mana and just clear the 4 damage AoE, which negates, you know, the defend of Argus buffs, the Nerubian eggs, you know, the Nerubians are, have 4 health very often, so it can be very Absolutely. important. Absolutely. Forsen does find a way to actually clear out this Acolyte of Pain without giving it multiple draws, which I do like to see here. The only issue is he did not use his mana optimally. He could have actually played down a Shredder there and started putting more damage. So by going with the play he did, he might extend this game a little bit further, giving the Patreon a few more turns to actually build up their board and regain some control here. Yeah, and I think uh, Bunny Muffins is starting to get that control back. I mean, he's got his War Song, he's got the Grim Patron, he's got the Death Bite set up, and Forsen doesn't quite have what it takes to deal 16 very soon. Wow, so what do you think there about actually using the Death Bite into the 1-1 one, one Hound instead of going face and allowing the Whirlwind it. Effect to kill it off next turn? I think that's a great play because if you consider the possibility that you have to execute, say, a high main, um, that can always be super useful. I think it's, it's mostly consideration for the second execute that he has, more so than would, anything would you, else. Would you have considered actually going face with the Death Spite and allowing the Whirlwind Effect to kill off the Hound? You know, that could have worked on the following turn. I guess Houndmaster is the only worry at that point, in which case mm -hmm. the Execute could be used on the Houndmaster. I don't mind that, but, um, you know, Bunny Muffins did pick up a crazy card there with a Grim Patron in a Rage if he wants to go for that just now without waiting for Warsong. There is very little chance that Forsen is able to handle all of that at once. Absolutely. I would actually love to see the Grim Patron in a Rage come down, attack into the Knife Juggler, and then armor up behind it. It'll give him four patrons, which at that point, um, now after using Unleash the Hounds, force him... Oh! And I he doesn't he go for it, plays the very defensively. Player. And Lord Walker Show comes out from forcing the Lord of the Terrible Two Drops. <laughs> That is not what you want to see. Bunny Muffins wait, wait, really... It is, it, is a, it is an 0-4. That's true. It actually will not buff up these patrons or give them the opportunity, but at the same time, it just doesn't give the damage output that he really needs to actually push through and win this game. And now there is no inner rage coming out for Bunny Muffins as a result of this low theb. Not necessarily the big, the big deal because he's got all the time in the world to make it work, but... 
I mean, this is going to be very dangerous to him. It's incredible about how quickly these players are playing these uh, turns. Some of them, actually, I found very difficult to think through, have multiple options. Yes, you can tell the experience of these players as they just throw them out and know exactly what they're doing each and every turn. <laughs> Orson cannot play a single spell here. <laughs> oh, poor Forson. This is eSports at its finest. I mean, what are you going to do? Quick shot, kill command, your own Lord Walker show? <laughs> But at the same time, this finds lethal from hand. This was gonna. You gotta realize this also stops bunny muffins from being able to play something like inner rage because it gives the hunter some extra damage later in the game. So it puts them both in a little bit of awkward situations. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, I think Forsen is much more worried about feeding his opponent kill command quick shot um, than bunny muffins is about giving his opponent whirlwind with all the patrons that could stem from that. Now, is this lethal? He's going to have four patrons, that's 12 damage, plus he's got four on the board, so that's 16, 17 damage right now, plus the two from the inner rage, that's a 19. He actually yeah. does not have lethal this turn, but he is very close. It's a formality at this point, I believe. Although Forsen could pull off something completely crazy, but I'll be damned if he does. Uh, it doesn't look oh, very sweet. likely. So, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, 19 damage. I Yeah. I'm trying to say, how will he start clearing this board, though, is the question. Now, will he decide to use the Execute, allowing Forsen to actually use it right back against him? <laughs> against what, an Asian Watcher? I mean, I don't think he will. Not that it matters much. I think at this point, Forsen doesn't care, because whatever... I mean, I guess he could still try to wipe the board, since Lord Walker chose now out of the picture, but... So this is I'm actually surprised Lord Walker Cho is dead. I have to say I'm a little surprised by that, because now the patrons are gone. I, I gotta say, I do admit that. Like, it sounds very odd to me that you would kill Lord Walker Cho in this position. Mm -hmm. Especially when you've already used all of your own um, spells, so it stops you're, you're him from actually initiative, exactly. you. Pretty much, yeah. I guess one of the reasons he may have, because he didn't want him using Inner Rage on his own Lower Walker Cho to trade off. But Forsen was able to clear off that entire board here. Um, what does Forsen need to find in this position? Is there even a thing? Iron B. Cowl on the initial Watcher would trade, but it's not enough. He needs to find card draw. Or he could also just concede. Yeah, okay, that works out. Well, so those two drops for Forsen. Those two drops. So we've got another quick game, uh, tying it up one to one. So that's, there we go, score is fixed. So Forsen has what looks like his Hunter left that he just played. Right. Meanwhile, Bunny Muffins has also Hunter. So we yeah. will be going into game three, the one that determines the entire series, with a Hunter mirror match. Very volatile uh, match if you look about it. Like, most of the time, whoever's got the most aggressive deck is going to take it. And if Forsen is playing a hybrid deck with a bit more of an emphasis on the early game, that's usually enough. And in fact, we see that he's got a Lepernome in his starting hand, which in this matchup is very often all you need. Just a bit of an early lead damage-wise. Mm -hmm. But we do see two fantastic hands from both players. Bunny Muffins with the Iron Beak Owl and Mad Scientist, and draws into another Mad Scientist and Knife Juggler. Meanwhile, Forsen does have the Lepernome and Worgen Infiltrator. Followed Great up, start. Exactly, and followed up with a Haunted Creeper, which is the perfect card to have in order to keep the Glaive Zook in hand. It, it gives you an almost an automatic buff in order to trade off the board. And honestly, as much as fantastic as Bunny Muffin's hand might look, I think Forsen's for what he's trying to accomplish is looking a bit better, but maybe I'm a little biased. Um, it does seem to me like unless an Unleash the Hounds is picked up, this is going to be very tough for Bunny. But if he does find it, it's going to be insane. And Bunny Muffins with the Argent Squire, that could actually be a big card in this matchup. It'll be interesting to see how he answers the board. I would expect to see what he's doing and actually owling the 1-2 and running the Scientist in to get a fair trade. I really like playing Argent Squire here. Like, this card seems to make a lot of sense if you're expecting Hybrid Hunter, because it gives you a two for one against their very early game. And you rarely ever will they really trade into it for whatever reason. Um, and in a play like this, you know, where you, you do silence the one two, the one ones that come out aren't that big of a deal. I really no. like the Argent Squire here. 
Are you at all surprised that he actually ran into the 2-1 instead of the 1-2? I think that broadcast that he actually has explosive traps in his deck over freezing. Because otherwise, he probably would have wanted to keep his... Um, why, would you the, alive. Yeah, why would you size the 1-2 if you're going to bring it back, right? Mm-hmm. So it is not Snake Trap, and it is not Freezing Trap. So that shows that it is Explosive Trap on the board. And Forsen will be doing his best to be playing around it. Uh, Glaive Zuka into Leper Gnome seems to make a lot of sense. I think Forsen is going to go... Uh, it's, the, it's the probably most sensible play, unless you want to weave in Hero Power with Leper Gnome and get that extra bit of damage again. That's very, very <laughs> important. And he, he does realize... And because it is Explosive Trap, he does have to be careful. He doesn't want to put too many minions on the board, because at some point that trap will be triggering. So I like how he actually puts two minions on the board to contest what he has, and then he'll have the Glaive Zooka to follow it up if necessary to pop the trap. And Bunny Muffin's going on the offensive here. So I I, I guess Le Forsen playing Lepernome forces Bunny Muffins not to give the Lepernome any favorable trade, because Forsen played it knowing that it wouldn't just die to Explosive, it would at least trade into something. Mm -hmm. and, and I like how Forsen's played it here in order to pop the trap with just a 1-1 one -one minion, allowing him to get a free pilot charter on the board. That will be a very hard card for Bunny Muffins to deal with. Um, Animal Companion is good getting the Misha here, but again, it still just trades one for one and a half, or one for kind of half the Shredder. Right. And the interesting thing is that it seems like Bunny Muffins is also running an aggressive deck with that Wolf Rider. Do you think it's hybrid on either side, or is this just a double Face Hunter mirror? So I actually think this is one of the earlier curve hybrid uh, builds from both players, the one that actually doesn't have high mains and only goes up to pilot Shredders. And okay. the reason being is it has more chance of the early game to kind of get the uh, tempo we've seen actually from both players here. Meanwhile, having a pilot shredder on turn four is sticky enough that it usually does get enough damage out uh, onto your opponent's face. That makes it worthwhile for the four mana. Yeah. So, who well, do you this think is, has this advantage is, in the current situation? I've got to it's, say, I think Forsen's got it, uh, the advantage that is, but it could, you, you know how this goes, right? This matchup is very volatile, and things can turn around pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I'm a little bit worried about him attacking into the Arcane Golem, because that will activate, um, if it's an explosive trap, the 2-3 into a 5-1, which Bunny Muffins does not have an answer to currently. So if Bunny actually attacks with his weapon into the 2-2, runs into an explosive trap, he will be doing 5 damage to his opponent's it'll be face. A, yeah, it'll be a great way to actually catch up uh, and get the advantage of that is damage-wise. And he can get card draw off of quick shot pretty much whenever he wants at this point. Mm -hmm. The real question is whether he thinks Bunny Muffins has Freezing Trap or not. You know what I like and even better is going face with a Glaive Zooka, then maybe redeveloping your Glaive Zooka and... Uh, Quick shotting the mad scientist. It really depends on what you think. As you said, the, you know that freezing trap mind games. But again, if we, if we saw how Bunny Muffins actually traded off his mad scientist earlier the ga this game, he played it as if he expected to get explosive trap, meaning that uh, Bunny may not even be running a single freezing. So I do to follow, think. Yeah. Well, okay, so this, this is care. actually a good line of play, too. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's hard to lose with this one, because you've got your weapon, your 2 damage hero power, plus a few, uh, the uh, quick shot, which guarantees lethal next turn. Unless, I guess, Misdirection shows up. And the Explosive Trap will be knocking off both these minions from board. Again, Bunny Muffins once again showed that he is most likely only running the Explosive. However, the quick shot in hand will be ending the series, giving Forsen the win 2-1 over Bunny Muffins in the, in the uh, overall match. Forsen checking out the top deck, and it is Animal Companion. Probably going to try for the Huffer here. And if he gets it, yes, he does. <laughs> Welcome to Hufferland. All right, basically typical Hunter Mirror match. Um, it's a race, and whoever has the Lepernomes usually takes the edge, and Forsen did. So that was a, like, the extra damage he got from those death rattles really did matter. So, well played by Forsen here, taking the series 2-1 to one over Bunny Muffins pretty quickly. I, 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 exactly, I have to say that may be one of the quickest best of threes I have ever witnessed as a caster and player. They both just non-stop. I have to give my, uh... Props to our production crew for keeping up with those turns. That was impressive. We were actually able to watch it, and I hope that was good for everyone. But that was, that was a great <laughs> match. Both players played really well.
<laughs> and they played really quickly, especially, which is uh, not something you see very often in a tournament setting. People tend to just uh, think as long as they can about the plays they're going to make. But Forsen's going to take it in a very convincing way against Bunny Muffins, which unfortunately for him, I guess, is not going to have a chance to, to, I guess, shine in this uh, first Really, it's the first kind of broadcasted game that I've seen him play at this point. Um, he qualified. He's pretty good on ladder. We've seen him you know, in the top 100s very consistently. But tournament-wise, he doesn't have a big presence yet. So he'll have a chance again in the next next weeks to, to get that bit of an exposure. But for now, we're going to go for a short break. And we'll be back with Surrender that we casted yesterday versus Show. He did win versus Show. Surrender, a South Korean player, versus Cypher, another somewhat well-known player on the Hearthstone scene. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 